Hi, everyone. My name is Beth Kumar. I'm one of the librarians at the GTU Library. And this is an orientation for um, anyone who is away from the Bay Area. So you'll be using the library mostly remote. Um, and I'm going to talk to you today about how to find stuff wherever you are and how to log in. So the first thing I want to say is don't worry if you can't remember everything, it's okay. We do have some guides and tutorials. And these are the guides and tutorials and we have some library orientation here. You can see we have um, a get it started with library research. This will give you a lot of the information that I'm going to talk about today. So I'm just going to open up another tab with the homepage because I'll be coming back to this. First of all, I want to point out that we have a chat service. So this is the Ask a Librarian chat. And my colleagues and I are online from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. So we are, um, I'm Beth, Stephanie and Asan, and we are available not just on the homepage, but in all of the guides, you'll see a chat box like this in your Moodle class space there is a chat box to uh, ask the librarians. And then also in um, Summon, which is our big search engine, there's chat in there. So don't feel like if you're getting stuck, you don't have anyone to ask. Um, we are here and we can help you. All right. The next thing I want to let you know is that if you feel frustrated and you want to sit down with one of us, we do offer Zoom appointments. So you can just either chat us and ask for a Zoom appointment, or you can email us. And our email address is library at gtu.edu. And you can um, ask you know, for us to do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with you and we can help you with your, you know, whatever you're, you're researching. We do have a phone um, and, but I should say we're not at the library very much these days. We are doing um, a lot of hybrid work due to the pandemic. So um, email and chat are the best ways to get some help. You can call us, but we're, we're not in the library um, every day. Okay. A few things you need to know to log in. So first of all, for students, the login will be your student ID number is the number that you're going to use to log in and a pin. And a pin is a library password that I'm going to show you how to create. For the student ID number, if you don't know what it is, it is listed in your student information system. So that's the place where you go and register for classes. There is um, all the student ID numbers are listed in with your regular information. You can also chat us um, if you're not sure how to, you know, get in and you don't know where to look. For faculty, staff, we will create a barcode number for you. Um, and so just let us know if you, if you don't have one or don't know what it is and then you'll use that number to log in. The first time you log in, you're going to have to set up a PIN. So here's it says your library account at the top. When I click on it, you can see there are two fields here. And the first time you're doing this to set up a PIN, put in your student ID number here, or if you're a faculty member, you can put in the barcode. And then here it says, leave the PIN blank. So leave this blank hit submit and it'll know you don't have a pin number and it'll prompt you to create a pin number. The pin number needs to have numbers and letters. It cannot have any symbols. Um, and then once you create it, that's your new pin number and you will use that to log in to the journals, to the um, eBooks, all of the you know library account information. You'll use that for everything. If you ever forget your pin, you've set one up but you don't know what it is, click this forget your pin button and it'll send you an email on your official school email address to um, help you set up a new one. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the homepage. I should say that if you are a student at a distance, you're not in the Bay Area, you may not even be in the country, you are not going to get a physical ID card, you don't need one. Um, the physical library card is to enter the building. The students need it to actually come in to the actual building. But the, the PIN number that you set up is your access to all library resources. 
Okay, let's get in a little bit to searching. For searching, we have a couple different places here on the library website. We have the advanced catalog search. So this is a, a typical library catalog like you probably used at other schools or public libraries before, has our books and our eBooks in it. We also have this page, Search Electronic Resources, which has the um, all of our databases in it. So we have more than 100 different databases. So you can search for articles, dissertations and theses, images, all that type of stuff is here. Summon, which is this big search box here, is an all-in-one search of both of those. So when you search Summon, you're searching the books that we have and all the article databases all in one place. So this is a really nice way to be efficient with your time because you can do one search and then you can just narrow it to online. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You can still go in and, and search these independently if you want to. So I'm just going to do a search here for interfaith care. Now I have a lot of search results, but what I want to point out on the side is where you can refine your results. So for example, if you know you only want to look at eBooks, you can check this box. And like, for example, this first result here is an eBook, you're going to get that. You can also click full text online and that will get rid of any physical items. So it'll get rid of print books that are on the shelf and journals that are on the shelf and you only get the online articles and the eBooks. So I'm going to click on that. And that's going to take some results out. You can also narrow by format. So if you know you want, you know, journal articles, there's other options below where you can narrow by languages if you want. Um, there's all kinds of, of different options for narrowing. And again, if you get stuck, the search box or the chat box is right here. So you can chat us. Now, once you have the pin set up, when you click full text online, for example, for this ebook, it's just going to open the ebook. I've already logged in today. So it lets me write in. And you can see here's some information about the ebook. And there is a table of contents. The really nice thing about our ebooks is you don't have to check out an ebook. Um, so you don't check it out, you don't have it for, you know, three months or something like that. You can just go right into the chapter you want and open it. So you don't have to click, you know, anything like that. So I just clicked on part three. I want to go right in and start reading part three. It just takes you right in there. Now you can download um, parts of the book if you want to. If you prefer to print them out, you have that option. Um, but if you just want to read the books, you do not have to do any of that. You can just click on it and it'll open. This is back in the record. You can see where the table contents are. Now, we purchased ebooks in a similar way that we purchased the print books, where we buy a specific number of copies. For this book, there's one copy available. And what that means is if I have the book open on my screen, another person cannot have it open on their screen at the same time. So, for example, now I just, you saw that I had the book open and then I closed it. So the book is now available for anybody else to open and read. So that's one thing that's really nice about ebooks compared to print books is this book isn't tied up for months while I have it. I'm done using it. The next person can use it. So having one copy of an ebook available actually allows a lot of people to use it. For um, printing, many of these publishers do have a limit on how many pages you can print and download and, you know, um, send to yourself. This publisher has a limit of 100 pages, so you'd be able to print out 100 pages of this book, and that's tied to an email account. So 100, 100 pages you can email to an account and print out. Now, if I go back up here, you can see there's other information about the book, other options on the side. I'm gonna talk a little bit about citations later, but eBooks, they may look a little different depending on which publisher it's coming from, but they have very similar features as far as, you know, just you can get in and you can read a chapter. Now, because I was searching in Summon, Summon opens up in a new tab. So I have not lost my search results. You can see my search results are still here in this tab and I have that book open in this one. So if I wanted to do the next one, this is, a, this is an article, I can click on it and it's taking me into this particular article 
the thing about articles is there's no limit. So I can download the PDF of this. All your classmates can download the PDF all at the same time. Um, and everybody can read them. So there's, there's not any kind of, you know, limit as the same way that eBooks have a restriction as far as one person viewing it at the moment at the time. And then same way with printing, you can print as many articles as you want. Okay, let me just go back here. So you, I'm back in my summon search results and you can see the different options here. Okay, the next thing I wanna point out is sometimes when you have the name of a journal or something like that, you wanna go directly into that journal. So you don't wanna do a search and, and you know browse through a whole list of things. You may, like for example, the Journal of Healthcare Chaplaincy, you may wanna just jump right into the most recent articles and see you know, what's new in this journal. So I'm gonna show you a little shortcut for doing that. So again, I'm back on the homepage. You can go into the search electronic resources. And then this right here is what we call the e-journal portal. So this will show me the different journals that we have um, electronically and what years we have of those journals. So when I go in, I'm gonna search for Journal of Healthcare Chaplaincy. And you can see for this particular journal, I have 1997 to present in Taylor and Francis. So that's one of our databases. And if I wanted to read that, all you do is click on it and opens up and it's gonna show you the most recent ones. So let me just click on this. So you can see we even have the brand new 2022 journal out and you can see here's all the different articles that are in there. You can just scroll through and if there's one that looks interesting to you, you can open up the PDF of that. And here's that particular article. Um, so that's a really nice way to get in is use the e-journal portal. If you already know the name of the publication and you just want you know, to browse in there, you can search for it and summon and it'll give you a lot of results. Um, but this is a nice way to just go in and find what you want. Now, it does not include the print journals we might have. Um, we, we are trying to move all of our journals online. But if there are any print journals that we have and you would like an article from them, we can scan them for you. And I'll show you that in a couple minutes. Okay, going back to the library website. I want to point out to you the library workshops. Now we used to teach all of our library workshops in the library, but because of all the time zones that people are in now, we've pre-recorded many of them. So many of the workshops we've recorded, they're listed here on this workshops page. And I'm not gonna read them all to you, but I wanna point out a couple of them. So one of the workshops that's extremely important, um, especially if you're writing a dissertation or thesis is Zotero. Zotero is a free piece of software that allows you to organize all of your research um, and it creates a bibliography for you um, in Turabian. Turabian is the style that um, the GTU schools use. Let me show you an example here. Okay, so this is, for example, this is one of my, um, one of my folders. So this is, this is my Zotero account. You can see it's organized. I have all of these different folders where I found stuff. And it, it looks like a lot, but we have a workshop on how to actually get in and set all this up for you. The nice thing about it is, let me just open up this article, is that if you found an article or an ebook that looks interesting to you, you can add it into your Zotero library with a single click. So for example, this article works with the browser, it's added in a little Zotero connector. And when I click on it, it's gonna add it into the Zotero library. So Zotero, here's where it's added it in. Here's all of the information about the article. So this is the, this is the information that's going to become the citation. And you can see right here, it actually has, yeah, it's saved right in Zotero. So that, that's pretty nice. Now, when you're actually ready to write a paper, let me just go in, I've done, I've done one already. 
we're just pretending I'm writing a really good paper here. All I'm gonna do is add the citation. And it's gonna start giving me suggestions of different articles I've already added in and um, we'll pretend it's this one. And then the only thing I have to type is the page number. So I'm pretending that I have it and let's pretend it's on page 34 and I hit enter. And it's added it in both to my bibliography here, you can see, and it's put it in as a citation. I don't know if you can see that one down here. So all I've done is type the page number. I found the article, I brought it into Zotero, and then I brought it into my paper. And so this can save you several hours of time per paper um, if you want to learn how to use Zotero. And you don't have to use it. There are, are other different types of software that do this, but Zotero is free, um, which is fantastic. You know, it's a nice free piece of software um, that you can do. So again, under library workshops, there's links. Um, right now I have a 47 minute video on setting it up and installing it. I'm going to break this down into smaller bits so you can jump into the section that you want, but it's a really great piece of software and I, I highly recommend it. And some of the professors actually will want you to use it um, because you're gonna spend less time typing your citations and more time doing the reading and learning the material. A few other workshops that might be of interest to you. We have a one on dissertations and theses. This is very short, it's only six minutes on how to get in, find dissertations and theses. We have a biblical exegesis. Um, there's a guide and a mini tutorial on it. And so if you are writing using biblical commentaries, there's um, information on how to find those. We have them online. And finally, Grammarly is another popular workshop. If you haven't used Grammarly, GTU has a license for the premium version of it. So it has a lot more features in the free version. And it will let you, it checks not just the spelling, but it checks, you know, if, if your document makes sense, if there's citations that are missing, it'll suggest places that you have to put them in. Um, and it's just a really nice way to, to have a nice, you know, clean paper that uh, flows really well. So those are a few of the workshops. So that's under workshops. And we will be adding more too. So we're, we're always recording different workshops. All right, let's go back to the library homepage. Few things I wanna show you on the, on the library homepage. So let me scroll down here. I had mentioned um, scanning. So there's a scanning form here. Now this is gonna be, you can request scans of things that are available in the library. So it has to be on the shelf if it's something that you want and the library owns it and it's available. So it's not checked out. You can request a scan of book chapters. If there's journal articles that are in print, particularly older journal articles, if they're not available online, we can scan it and send it to you if we own it. If we do not own it, you have a few options. One of them is interlibrary loan. Interlibrary loan is if there's an article that you want, we will request it from another library and will be sent to you as an email. So uh, book chapters also, we can do this. So you can get those either way. If, if you think that there's something we should own and we don't, please suggest it to us. We buy books all the time from student suggestions. There may be topics you're searching on that fit within you know, what our library has. So books on theology, philosophy, you know, religion, different books like that, please suggest them. And we try to buy them as an ebook if, if the publisher will sell it to us as an ebook. If not, we'll buy it as print, um, but we, we buy ebooks first. Ebooks e are available uh, much quicker it's usually only a couple days and the ebooks are available where the print books, depending on if, you know, it's in stock and out of print, things like that, they could take a lot longer um, for us to get, get our hands on the print book. So please suggest a purchase. If you want a physical book, don't request it via interlibrary loan if you're not near the, the Bay Area. So if you live in another state, we would suggest that you go to your local public library and you can request physical items be sent to your local public library. So many of the public libraries near you will have an interlibrary loan 
office or they'll have a website that talks about their interlibrary loan services. So for example, if there's a book on our shelf and it's a physical book and you want the entire book, you could go to your public library, request it, and we would send it there. Then you would be able to pick it up. You could use the book. And then when you're done, you'd return it to the public library and they would send it back to us. So sometimes I call this reverse ILL um, because you're requesting ILL at the library that's closest to you. And then the books will come that way. So that's one option. Another option is there is a program that we're part of called the ATLA Reciprocal Borrowing Program. And what that program is, is it's an agreement between seminaries to let other seminary students in. And this, this is a nice program because you can go in, you could use the library. Now with COVID restrictions, some of the libraries um, have closed you know, some of the options. So you may not be able to go in and browse their collection. You may be able to go in and use curbside pickup. So let me just pull that up. And we also have it linked on the guides and tutorials page. Under the getting started, we have some at law reciprocal borrowing. And again, don't worry about having to find this page. Um, if you live in another place, you can chat us and you can um, have us check. So I have had students that have said, you know, hey, I live in Denver. Can you tell me about libraries near me that I can use? because there may be some that are in this program you can use. There may be also other libraries that we can set up agreements with locally. And we've done this with other research institutions that maybe don't necessarily have a, a seminar or a seminary in them. Um, so for example, if you live in Denver, you could ask me what your options are and I can, I can help you find this. Um, Colorado Christian, Denver Seminary, St. John, and what is this? It's probably ILIF, ILIF School of Theology. So for example, if you lived in Denver, you would be able to work with these schools. Um, I could reach out to them, let them know you're a student and that you need a card and they would give you a card and then you'd be able to walk into ILIF and um, use their collection to check out physical items. So that's, that's the really nice thing about this program is Wherever you're located, we'll work with you to make sure you can access materials that you need. And let me just scroll back out. This program is available in the United States and Canada. You can see there's Canadian libraries, a couple of different places. Um, if you are outside of the United States and Canada and there are other you know, libraries near you, we can still work out something. You know, I can contact those libraries or maybe you know about some of the restrictions they have about students getting cards, things like that. We also have a letter I could send out to the other libraries if they want to charge a fee. Sometimes they're willing to waive fees and things like that for students. So I want to point out that as one option. Another option that's important for students outside of the Bay Area, well, even students within the Bay Area, is WorldCat. And this is WorldCat's also linked off of our Getting Started page, but it's just worldcat.org. And when you go to this page, you're able to find materials near you. So you could put in, um, we're just gonna do a search here. So we'll just say, let's just say this book, for example. When you scroll down, you can enter your location or your zip code, and it will list the items in order of location. So if I wanted this particular book, I, I listed Berkeley here, you can see this book is owned by UC Berkeley, it's owned by Holy Names, but you would put in your location and it would show you where that book is located near you. And then we could work with that library if you don't already have privileges to use that library, we could work to make sure you can get it. So again, this is for physical items that you want to check out. If you want to get, uh, let me just go back to the library homepage. If you want to get eBooks, articles, things like that, that we don't have, or I should say articles and chapters, you can use the interlibrary loan. So we will send the articles to you but if there's a physical item you want, we do have options for you to get it. 
So again, I don't, I don't want to show you all these things to, to overwhelm you, um, but I just wanted to let you know there are options. So whatever it is that you're looking for, um, we're happy to help. So again, there's the chat here, and you can email us at library at gtu.edu, and we're happy to help you. I look forward to chatting with you online at some point.